Tawa is a poet, a blogger, and a social entrepreneur who is currently running My Mind, My Funk, which is a mental health information and support Write about my life as a rape survivor and living with a dual diagnosis of epilepsy and bipolar. So um, I share about, it's more like a diary. So when I have a good day, I write about it. When I have a bad day, I write about it. When I have a really ugly day, I write about it. So that's what my blog does. It just shares information about daily life as a rape survivor and living with a dual diagnosis. Yes, that's true for now. I started poetry, I think, when I got ripped. It was my avenue, my outlet. Um, a lot of questions in my mind, a lot of mixed emotions. There are times I was really, really depressed. I just wanted to be out of this world. And then there are times I, I thought there was hope that I would live today and live tomorrow and live the day after that. So based on that, I used to write how I feel. And then now I started sharing what um, I've written. And that's when I started becoming really active in the local poetry scene. But then through me sharing, a lot of people started sharing about their own personal stories, um, not necessarily with regards to rape, but just their struggles with depression caused by a number of things. And that's when I saw there's more need to offer information specifically about mental health issues. And then with information, people started asking for places they can get support. So that was an additional thing that I thought that would be a service I'd offer. So now I'm really concentrating on making the enterprise, which is called My Mind, My Funk, um, self-sustaining and that just takes a lot of my time planning the programs fundraising doing all that so i have i still write but i don't have that much time to be on stage and and host poetry nights that i used to do before but when i'm invited to do a performance i always accept the invitation do interviews and uh, people ask me what, what's the inspiration of either my poetry or the work I do, somehow, somehow we have to mention about the rape. And it depends with how I feel at that particular time. If I've been going through a stressful week and I know just recounting the ordeal is going to be a trigger for me, I openly say I don't want to talk about it now. If I feel that I'm okay, that um, I, I know the limits, that's what I do. I just try to gauge myself and see what are the limits. So I know talking about it and just from the ears, I've seen it's helping a lot of people know that they're not alone, that you can go through any sort of a deal and be able to come out on the other side and continue living your life. Yes, it will leave some scars, but you're not your experiences. So yes, sometimes it brings me down and I say, no, I don't want to talk about it. And sometimes I feel I'm okay that if I shared about it, I have my support system with me. I have, I feel okay mentally to share it. So I don't get offended. I, what I do is know where I am at that time. And that's what I'll share with the audience, be it on radio, newspaper, TV, or just when I'm invited for a speaking engagement. Um, next week on Monday, on the 15th of June, it will mark 12 years. Um, so I call them, each year for me is an year of strength. So it will be 12 years of strength next week on Monday. And um, as much as it was a very unfortunate thing to happen, uh, so many beautiful things have been brought about by me accepting what happened, getting the help and support I need, and offering that support and help to many other people. I found My Mind, My Funk in September of 2013. And the reason I founded it is because through my blog and through my poetry to share about my personal experiences and people would ask me all these questions like 
what is bipolar what are the signs of depression which doctor do i see which hospital do i go to what medicine do i use and for me it was just too much to respond to all those emails at once so we began it just to give information and support about mental health because that's one of the taboo topics we have in Kenya. You rarely get people saying, oh, my name is so and so and I have a mental health condition. Yet so many people go through the same. So just making sure that they have the proper information and proper support that they need. What we do at my mind my punk is have so much fun. <laughs> Uh, sharing information and uh, support about mental health. So we do it online uh, through our, through my blog, through our Facebook and Twitter accounts. We do it offline through Awareness Drive. So we go to churches, to mosques, to schools, to corporate um, spaces and any other space that people give us a platform just to talk about mental health and epilepsy and where you can get support and just general information, suicide, all the related things. Mental health issues are a, a more of an attitude change issue rather than just a one-off information. Like, you know, um, I tell you, if this is pain, if you apply it here, this is the effect it will have. So that's something you know, it's like one plus one. But mental health issues, a lot of people believe they're as a result of witchcraft. So it, it takes a lot of continuous awareness creation so that they are able to see it from a different angle. So that's one of the challenges. And then the next thing is we need money <laughs> uh, to run the office, to run the free SMS line, to be able to move to all the places we'd like to go and share the information to support the people we support to get either medication or um, go to court or visit a psychiatrist. So um, um, yeah, that's one other thing. And then another thing I would say, getting, getting the, the government to have the proper legislation so we've been working together with other mental health stakeholders to get a mental health bill, but it's taken forever to, to just get, it's gotten like one or two readings, but it's stalled there. So we need that so that a lot of things on the ground are able to be streamlined and people living with mental health conditions can have a fair playing ground as any other person in the country, yeah. I love tea. I love eating. It's 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 a hobby I take very seriously. <laughs> uh, I write a lot. Any given time, I think I have three to five notebooks. I'm just either writing ideas, I'm writing thoughts. Um, I journal a lot too. So. Um, yeah, I, I love writing. I love reading. Um, I read across the board. So I read because uh, I dropped out of uni. So I try to update myself as much as possible. And then also running an organization. Yeah, I'm doing all the reading I can. Um, I love traveling. I, I, I love traveling or just walking, just absorbing nature. And, and, and that just makes me happy. I love watching the moon. At night, I just open my door and especially <laughs> it's it's trite tonight. It's 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 really amazing. It's really amazing. Um, they have a beautiful garden. So again, when I want to work outdoors, I know where to come. And then they have nice colors on their walls and they have nice art pieces on their walls so I think they are secretly trying to be a mental health thingy because they just give that nice relaxed atmosphere for people and for, for the people who are members here and people who just 
uh, wannabe members like myself. So um, if you're an artist and you've not signed up with the Creatives Garage, you should do so. And when you're here, our office is next door. So yeah, okay, bye. <laughs>